All right, today we're going to take a look at Unit 8B again, Lesson 8A, but today we're going to take a look at Day 2. Remember I said before that some of the times these titles might be a little bit confusing, but just make sure that you have 8A, Day 2. Again, we are going to look at um, writing equations of lines in slope-intercept form. So again, just to recall, that slope-intercept form is the y equals mx plus b, where m is our slope and b is my y-intercept. At this point, we should have this memorized and we should know what each of these variables are equal to. Now, yesterday's lesson we looked at um, examples where they gave us the slope and the y-intercept or they gave us one point and the slope. Today we are going to look at, for our first examples, is finding the equation of the line or writing our equation of the line given two points. So again we're going to have to use that y equals mx plus b. This is the format that our answer should be in when we are finished. Now if we look at A, it says that the line passes through the points 2, 6, and 1, 4. What we need to do for these problems is if we look at what we have right now, the y equals mx plus b, we first have to find the slope, but we also have to find the b. I like to split my work up into two categories so that I can kind of keep things a little bit more organized. Now, to find our slope, if we have two points, we can use our slope formula here, that y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So this is going to be my x1, y1, x2, y2. Then I'm just going to plug that into my formula so that I can find my slope. Now I have 4 minus 6 over 1 minus 2. Now I'm just going to simplify here. 4 minus 6 gives me a negative 2. Then I have 1 minus 2, which gives me a negative 1, but we know a negative over a negative is positive, so this actually simplifies to a positive 2. So I have now that my slope is 2. Remember yesterday when we were trying to find our b value, they gave us one point, so we went to plug that in to find our b, because now at this point I have y equals 2x plus b. We still need to find that b value. So what you can do is you can pick either one of these points and put it back in to the equation that we have to find our b value. For the first one, I'm going to show you. Plugging in each of these, you'll still get the same answer, but you don't have to do that each time. You just have to pick one of them. So if I look at the first one with 2, 6, I'm going to have 6 equals 2, which is my slope, times 2, plus b. 2 times 2 is 4. So I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. So I get my b value is equal to 2. So now I have my m and I also have my b. So I can write my equation on my line. y equals 2x plus 2. Now, for this first example, you need to make sure that you show this other part because this is using our first point. We can also use the second one. Remember I said I'm going to show you how to do this, but you don't have to use each each time. I just want to show you that you will still get that same value. So I'm going to have 4 equals 2 times 1 plus b. 2 times 1 is 2, so I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. So again, I have that the b is equal to 2. So therefore, no matter what point you plug in from the ones that are given, you will get the correct b value. So you don't have to do each point. So again, my final answer here is y equals 2x plus 2. Looking at part b, again, I'm going to split my work up into finding my m and then finding that b value. So I have the points negative 2, 5, and 2, negative 1. So again, I'm going to label these x1, y1, x2, y2. So I have negative 1 minus 5 over 2 
minus a minus 2. Now, remember, we can look at this as negative 1 plus a negative 5. So I have negative 6. And then I have 2 minus a minus 2. So remember, we have that double negative, so they become positive over 4. So now I can simplify this slope as negative 3 halves. So now I have my slope. So at this point, if I look at this side of my equation, I have y equals negative 3 halves x plus b. Now I need to find my b. Remember, we can plug in any of the points. I'm just going to choose the first one. So I have 5 equals negative 3 halves times negative 2 plus b. A negative times a negative is going to become positive. And this is the same thing as saying negative 3 halves times negative 2 over 1. So those cancel. So I have 5 equals 3 plus b. I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. So I get that 2 is equal to my b value. So again, I have my m and my b, so I can go ahead and write my equation of my line. y equals negative 3 halves x plus 2. So this is your answer for the second one. Again, these are things that we practiced yesterday, and then using our slope formula is practice from unit 8a. So these are things that we should be comfortable doing at this point. We just need to make sure that we watch our signs. We're going to save the U-tries for class tomorrow. If you take a look at our next example, it says, write the equation of a line given the graph. Now, we're only going to look at one example like this. The good thing about this, though, is it gives us our points. We don't have to look for where they fall right on the interval. So first, let's look at these points. So this is going to be 1, 2. And down here, I have negative 1, negative 4. So remember, we still want it in that y equals mx plus b. At this point, we can find our slope two different ways. What I think would be easiest here would be to count the rise over the run. Remember, our m is the rise, so up or down, over the run. So if I start at my point furthest to the left, I go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So my rise is 6, and then I go to the right, 2. When we simplify this, my slope is going to be 3. So my m is equal to 3. So now I have to find that b value. Again, we have two points that are given to us, so we can do the same thing we just did on that first page. I'm going to pick the point 1, 2. So I have 2 equals 3 times 1 plus b. So 3 times 1 is 3, so I have 2 equals 3 plus b. Subtract 3 from both sides, so I have negative 1 equals b. So now if I look, I have my b value and my m value. So my equation for my line is going to be y equals 3x minus 1. Now, remember that b value is your y-intercept, where it crosses the y-axis. If we look here at this one, this one works out nice for us because it hits evenly right on that y-axis. So we didn't even really have to show any of this work. We could have just pulled that information right from the graph. However, if you weren't able to recognize that, that work is done here for you. <coughs> okay, so the U try we are going to take a look at in class tomorrow. Next thing we're going to do is take a look at example three. Now, the difference between the last example and this one 
is our coordinates aren't really given to us. So we have to identify them. Remember, when we are looking at our lines, we have to find points that hit <coughs> evenly on the graph. So again, remember, we're going to go with y equals mx plus b. The first thing I'm going to look for is I'm going to see if on my y-intercept, if that point hits evenly on here. And, in fact, it does. So I technically already have my b value. So I have y equals mx plus 2 because this falls at the point 0, 2. Now what I need to do is I need to look for the next spot on this line that this hits evenly, right on that interval. So the next one we're going to take a look at is right here. So to find that slope again, or that M, we're going to look at the rise over the run. So I go down one, and then to the right two places. So my slope is going to be negative one-half. So now I can write my equation of my line because I have something to fill in for that m value. So the equation of the line here is going to be y equals negative one-half x plus two. So again, we are able to pull most of that information from the graph. If it doesn't hit on that intercept directly, we may have to go back to finding these two points and calculating our slope. Now, if we look at part B, part B is a little bit different. Again, the points aren't given to us. And if we look here on my y-intercept, it doesn't hit at that exact point with how we're looking at it. So what we are going to do is we're going to find points that are directly on the line, that hit the e interval evenly. So the first one that I'm going to pick is going to be here. So I have this point will be at 4, 0. Then if I look again, we hit the graph right here. And this is going to be at 2, negative 2. So if I take a look and I count my slope or my rise over my run, if I look at that m again, the rise over the run, we look at the point furthest to the left, I went up to, and then to the right to, which simplifies to 1. So my slope here is going to be 1. Now we need to find that v value, and like we said, we're not 100% sure if this hits right where it needs to. So I'm actually just going to pick one of the points that I located from my graph, to find that v value because right now if I were to fill in my equation I have y equals 1x plus b. So I need to find that b. So I'm just going to take this point here of 4, 0. So I have 0 equals 1 times 4 plus b. So 1 times 4 is 4. So I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides to get this to cancel out. So my b value is going to be equal to negative 4. Now, we look at our graph, it's just about there, but we couldn't make that true judgment call on that. So the easiest way is to just double check by plugging in one of the other points that you were able to locate. So now if I need to write my equation line, I have y equals. Remember, here we said that it's going to be 1x, but we don't have to write the 1 in front, so it's just going to be x minus 4. These ones are a little bit easier for you guys to kind of check your answers, only because if you ended up with a positive 4 here, if you look back at your graph, that wouldn't be realistic because we don't have anything on that top half hitting the top half of our y-axis. So you are able to kind of check by looking at it. Now, the other u tries for this one we're going to take a look at in class tomorrow. And again, these should be things that you should be able to locate points on here. We looked at that in the last unit and we should be able to use the rise over the run or our slope formula. But we're going to look at these tomorrow. 
Again, you need to make sure that you fill out this section of your note sheet. All right, we'll see you tomorrow.